This show is proudly brought to you by the Hashtag Me Network. And we are rolling. Mm. Kia ora, thanks so much for tuning into episode 66 of Access Granted, our weekly Kiwi tech and media podcast. I'm Raj, my background's in film design, media, and making things happen. And I'm Mike, and my background is explaining stuff, connecting people, and getting things done. And you're here, and where are we? We're at the, uh, the Murphy's on Cuba Street. Hence the fiddly D music in the background. And you're here, or there... Because you're a Kiwi that either works in or has a great passion for tech or media in New Zealand. Episode 66, and this show will be catching up with Grant and Daryl from Atomic, alongside a special pop-in appearance from Alistair from Scoop. But, before we get into the Atomic guys, here's a few words from the Pledge Me CEO and founder Anna Gunter. Listen up, as there's something cool closing tonight. And when I say tonight, I mean... Tuesday, the 15th of September, 2015. So the day you should be listening to the podcast. As in, now. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right, over to Anna. Well, I've got three campaigns that I thought you might be interested in. Um, <laughs> I had four. I'm bringing it back to three. <laughs> um, but uh, the first one is one that's actually closing tonight. Uh, and it's something that I'm really excited about because it's a social enterprise. Um, but it's a company called uh, Eat My Lunch. And what they do is it's buy one, gift one model. So if you buy a lunch from them, they will gift a lunch to a kid in a school um, who hasn't brought their lunch um, cool. in Auckland. Yes. Very cool. And in the past 13 weeks, they've made over 70,000 lunches out of their home kitchen. Um, and they just realized that they'd gotten to the point where they couldn't really grow any further uh, in their home kitchen. So they're raising money to set up a commercial kitchen. 13 weeks, 70,000 lunches. 70,000 lunches. I was there one morning and they did 1,700 lunches in the morning. And I've never seen so many carrots. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Ah, yeah. Now, when you said tonight... So it's uh, What's the, what is today? Tuesday, the fifteenth of September. It is. So I think this is going to go out. This will be a rad thing, of course. This goes out tonight or today. Yeah. So it's tonight at eight. At eight p.m. Yeah, and they're um, trying to raise one hundred twenty thousand dollars, and they're at one hundred and fourteen as of nine o'clock this morning. Wow. So yeah, very excited um, and just so stoked. They've they're the most crowded campaign we've ever had, the most pledgers we've ever had to a campaign with over 2,000 right now. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And so for those that have just gone, oh, bum, missed it, how, what's the best way for them to keep in touch with Pledge Me and the stuff that they want to know? Is it... Um, so get on our newsletter. Right? Yeah. Oh, so our newsletter. newsletter goes out every two weeks and it um, sort of highlights some of the campaigns that we have going. Um, and we've definitely talked a bit about Eat My Lunch just because we're so excited about them. Um, but if you do want to support Eat My Lunch and this their campaign is already closed. You can always go and buy a lunch. Oh, and then if you yes. don't live in Auckland, you can um, actually gift two lunches. So spend $10 and give two lunches to um, kids at a school in need. Cool. And you're on Twitter. You're on yep. the Facebooks. Yep. Yep. Um, all the places. All, everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. And they are too. They're marketers. So they're everywhere. Um, so that was the first campaign I was going to tell you about. The yeah. second campaign is one of our current um, equity campaigns. And it's for Ubi, which <laughs> we just discussed how many O's there were in that. Uh, there's four out of our own backyard. Um, and what it is, it's a software uh, solution for, um, for local agriculture. So they want to support food boxes and things and hyper-local buying of food. Um, and they've set up currently in a few different locations, uh, Auckland, uh, Fresno, California. Okay. Um, yep. So they're they're already exporting an international, and they're raising uh, money to keep on growing between 200k and 800k. They've already met their minimum, so they're really exciting um, and doing things really differently as well. Another social enterprise. And they've structured their some, themselves slightly differently. Mm. Very interesting. Awesome. Well, that's definitely what I'm a bit looking for. I've got some friends actually that I must remember. Just remember, send, to your, send them the details. Listen to your podcast. Like, yes, listen like, to my own podcast. I like it. Um, and the last one that I was going to talk about is Supreme, which is uh, a campaign that launched yesterday. It's a project campaign, uh, and it's for um, Soylent. So I'm not sure if you guys have heard of Soylent before, but um, they crowdfunded in the States last year, raised, I think it was like over a million bucks okay. uh, to create this um, sort of, I think they call it a superfood. I'm not sure if they call it a superfood, but basically it's, a, it's a, a drink that you make, and it's the full meal replacement, and it's actually... Um, 
the perfect nutritional combination of what you should be consuming. Um, so it's a food replacement and they, I believe, open source their recipe. And so people internationally now can make it because they don't really ship internationally. It's too expensive to mm. ship it internationally. Um, and so this is a Kiwi uh, company that I've set up and they've created their own version of the recipe um, and they're crowdfunding to produce that at the moment. Awesome. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. Some interesting, interesting things coming through. Okay. Thank you so much, Anna. No worries. Well, there you go. Let's pledge me. Pledgeme.co.nz. And, of course, if you see Anna in your town, and it's very highly likely that you will, pop along and say hi and tell her where you heard you, where you uh, know her from. Right. So, to Grant and Daryl from Atomic. Now, not, not everyone will know what that is. So, I stumbled across Atomic when I was in need of a prototyping tool. And what's a prototyping tool, you might ask. <laughs> But, um, What's a prototyping Well, it's kind of... I, I, I work in Photoshop and things like that, right? And there's no way to share that, like a, like a Microsoft 365 document or a Google document. So I needed something that's online-based that I can still tweak the design, load up images, make things clickable so the client will go, oh, that's how the website works, instead of trying to imagine it. Yeah. Because some clients out there, you know, you know how it's like out there, designers. They <laughs> can't exactly visualise everything. So a couple of web projects uh, later, I've been using it for a little while now, and it's... Um, it's changed the way we present to clients. In fact, we even presented, uh, had an account manager use it to present to a client. Wow, and cool. it went down real well. So we talked, this time we talked to Daryl and, um, and Grant about the early days of Zero. They were actually employee five and six. That's amazing. I wonder if there's a t-shirt with a number on it. To yes. That as well. Yeah, where Grant and Daryl had their first startup experience before covering the early days of interactive design. Using graphics to tell stories is how they came up with the Google Docs of design software known as Atomic.io. Here we are, Studio One, with Mike and Grant from Atomic. What are we talking about, gentlemen? Well, I think we start with Grant with the first question, That's right. which is, this is the question we ask everyone to start with, which is, Grant, what makes you happy? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Thank you. And somewhat unexpected. <laughs> um, being um, still feeling like a relatively new dad. Um, my daughter is uh, four and a half now, but I'm um, still feeling new to it. I kind of it come, comes freshly to mind as far as just um, the yeah, just satisfaction of watching her grow and kind of seeing the world again through her eyes, and it's pretty uh, meaningful for me. So that's, that's, I guess that's outside of work, but um, yeah, um, that's probably one of the most important things in my life at the moment, just sort of seeing her grow and enjoying, enjoying the, um, the ride of being a dad, even though it's really hard work, uh, uh, and I like to complain a lot about it as well. Um, I like to take this uh, opportunity to say something nice about it, <laughs> rare opportunity. Yeah, no, um, yeah. That's probably what makes me most happy at the moment. It's a life. privilege and a pain, isn't it? Yeah. yeah that's that's yeah. how I always it. daily. Mm. And, yeah. can, and I find that I can flip flop between them within seconds. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Going from, oh, you're a complete and utter. And then I'll do or say something. Oh. <laughs> you so cool. That's their job, eh? <clears throat> Take you in both directions. Yeah. See what happens. <laughs> I felt like we had about a two and a half year period there where I got definitely insufficient sleep. Like, to the point where, you know, like I was kind of like felt half lobotomized going to work each day. Just kind of. <laughs> Pulling through, but um, now I've kind of like, now it's, yeah, she's about four and a half, so much better, and I kind of feel like a full human being again. So, able to say much more nice things about it. And was work then, was that atomic or was that something else? Um, no, so it's kind of, uh, career has kind of uh, evolved a bit since um, she was born. I was actually working at um, Zero for uh, three and a half years, so I kind of was one of the first team members there when was, the team was about six or seven people, one of the first designers on board, back when they were just in an apartment building. Oh, wow. Um, above, um, right to the very beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, just up by a new Metro, and then kind of stayed with um, there and watched the company grow to about 100 employees, and which is a really amazing ride because mm. it was just so, like, so rapid and um, my first kind of startup experience, I guess. Um, and it's probably what led me to where, I'm at, where I am now. And then from there, I went and worked at She, the game studio. I was yep. kind of lead um, interface designer there for a while. And is She now Pickpock? She is now Pickpock. Right? Yes, um, right. yeah. Pickpock is the mobile arm of um, oh, She, but it's the sort of um, label that they're concentrating on at the moment. Sidahe, is that right? Sid. Yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's pronounced She. I know, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but I can never see it. Everybody used to call it, say, hey, do you know about Sidic Interactive? Yeah. Oh, it's, from, it's from Banshee. 
a famous yeah. um, Shawnee out there. Um, and, and that was fantastic. I really loved that because I love games and I love kind of thinking about um, game design. And, um, and then I moved on to um, BNZ where I kind of teamed up with um, Daryl again, who's a, a co founder of uh, Atomic and had worked with him at um, Shift and Zero previously, but it was kind of there that we did some almost like a startup within a big corporate. I mm-hmm. had that kind of experience of doing that, and a lot of the, um, the problems that arise or the kind of challenges that we had was trying to do something quite innovative there and doing that very kind of close knit kind of product teams. I think that's kind of like it was a catalyst for um, deciding to go off and try and solve some of these problems. Um, so really about kind of making design work within these sort of tight product teams. So that's kind of how we got a so roundabout back- way of how I got to tell it. And your background design, that's, that's My background what design, yeah. I um, started off a finance degree in Otago and then kind of worked... Um, in a true kind of multimedia studio back in the day where multimedia meant like doing city roles yeah. and, uh, <laughs> I remember those kind of I have to say that was the thing that came to my mind yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we, did, we did a lot of uh, city roles from Marina New Zealand quite elaborate you know crazy 3D things and um a lot of stuff for just presentations, right? People would spend, um, you know, New Zealand had a big budget, so they'd spend twenty grand on a cedar arm like, just for a presentation because it was a big, it was a big deal, mm. um, and that sort of thing. And it was really fun, and it's kind of funny that you know a lot of the things that you learned or the sort of techniques that you could use back then. You know, almost feels like they're only now returning to the sort of capabilities of what you can do online. Like, doing some pretty um, gnarly stuff. I used to use the program. I used to use Director, right? To do yeah, all yeah. that stuff, and yeah. it was quite heavy. A lot. And Flash was sort of similar, uh, different. So now, now there's a lot more tools like yours online that can just do stuff that you take ages to do when you're making scene runs and other things like that. It took ages, and then most of the time it's broken as well when you made it the first time. Always a drama, right? But then um, now the new tools are out. It's like, oh yeah, you can do all the stuff you did back then. Yeah, I'm like kind of thinking about the best ways to communicate things. Like, is it mm. text? Is it images? Is it video? Is it, you know, like it's yeah. more commonplace to see, like, it's an interesting combination of, like, say, infographics, video, and whatever, too, as part of storytelling. And I guess that's kind of, um, yeah, it's good to see that as part of the web now. Mm. Whereas we were kind of playing around, mucking around, and making lots of mistakes yeah. all the way back in the 90s, right? Um, <laughs> you don't look that old. <laughs> You've worn well, I've got to say. You don't look that old. <laughs> Good Lord. I'm from the 90s and the stuff. I feel like I'm ancient compared to looking at you. I'm feeling ancient. <laughs> Progressively every day. Yeah. It all catches up eventually. Well, it does, I suppose, yes. So how did you come up? So you were at uh, Zero. Is that where you've sort of come up with the idea of, hey, I need to come up with a new tool? I was more at, kind of like, a, I think that um, the Zero experience was what gave me interest in doing like a, a startup, like kind of doing my own thing and seeing if I could replicate some of the, the fun line of the startup um, with my own thing. But it was really at BNZ where Daryl um, kind of, came up with the idea really and I'd be kind of egging him on and sort of discussing the idea a bit more about um, creating this tool and it kind of felt like um, a few things came together for us that we were kind of doing lots of design and kind of prototyping and trying to come up with this um, some kind of new ways of approaching kind of problems design problems there and this was working on what is now U Money, uh, um, BNC is sort of new internet banking platform, which at the time was quite an innovative kind of project and kind of started off as kind of like this uh, um, small group of kind of renegades working away on this sort of side project and then became what is now like they're kind of migrating to it as their core internet uh, banking platform. It's kind of started off as quite a sort of niche thing that's kind of kind of bloomed just because of its, its success. So um, it's really um, it's really there and actually kind of. Um, Daryl kind of sort of identifying that the time might be right to create 
a design tool and the browser kind of like mm. the, what, what would the Google Docs of design kind of look like yep. right. um, just because of the sort of web capabilities and people's bandwidths and just general kind of performance was kind of there yeah, whereas like trying to do something you know any number of years before um, then just kind of felt like oh it's never going to work yeah. it's going to just it's going to well maybe you've got to do it with a dial up connection yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly and um, so kind of like time time was right from that perspective and at the same time um, Adobe were killing off fireworks which was the tool that we used like it's a dedicated interface design tool that we actually use on a day to day basis so we're kind of like frustrated about that and um there's a few things just coming together. That sort of desire to kind of do our own thing was a big part of it as well. Um, so we thought, oh yeah, why not? And got um, a sort of technical co-founder on board as well. So it kind of felt like the kind of whole trinity of having kind of like business design tech guys all, all, all buying into the idea. Yeah. Yeah. So for those that don't know, and I've just had a cigarette and a chat with, with Rajak Sides for, for a briefing, <laughs> yeah. um, can you take us through the... Oh, let's call it the pitch. What the hell? <laughs> it's, so it's atomic.io is the website. That's it's right. Tool. Yeah. Can you What's give, it all about? Yeah. What does it? What, what does it do? I think most people have sort of got a sense of it, but it's good. I'm, I'm not perfectly refined at giving a, a pitch, but uh, <laughs> that's okay. I'll give it in my um, description. Yeah. To us, I think actually the like the simplest way of thinking about it is probably like Google Docs of design. So, oh, like, you know, like, so that's a kind of way because you kind of automatically bring a lot of things to that. It's like, oh, I realise that it's in the browser. I realise that it's kind of collaborative. And so that's a lot of those things are actually um, part of it. But if we kind of describe it, I would kind of describe it as a sort of collaborative design platform. And the, the reason I uh, say that is the, a big emphasis of what it, we're trying to do is like try and create a tool that's good for teams to work on new products together so it's like trying to break out of the model of designer sits in Photoshop <laughs> comes up with some grand things and presents them sort of X number of weeks later throws it over the fence uh, that's right yeah. that's right and sort of kind of moved to a model where hey I'm, I'm, I'm in this tool I'm working on it it's like seamless for me to um, share my ideas as I go yeah. kind of rapidly and we yeah. all iterate we can all talk, talk about them and kind of progress them and it's much more of a um, rapid iteration work in progress Perfect. mock them up and kind of a big part of that is like trying to work out how this thing works as much as how it looks so yeah. that's why there's kind of um, the prototyping aspect has been kind of baked into the tool since day one so it's pretty um, so look on how work out how it looks mm -hmm. how it works discuss it with your team is it a prototype for websites, for apps, for like, virtual reality? I don't know. It, what, what does it prototype? That's a good question. Um, the focus of the way we articulate is product design, but that can be like um, web apps or yep. mobile apps or anything like that. So mm -hmm. probably less geared towards like marketing mm -hmm. um, websites or something, or really the information heavy zones yeah. or really kind of deep. Um, information architecture sort of yeah. heavy sites um, so um, it's much more around products and I guess sort of innovative products is probably where we're kind of like our kind of um, sort of direction we're kind of steering to it's not about necessarily reusing a lot of um, sort of old tired patterns is about being kind of an, invent new patterns yeah. if you want to yeah. as well or being, at least having the tools to be able to do that if mm. that's what you're interested in doing yeah so that, um, mm. we kind of we kind of think that um, kind of you know software is in your world and all that uh -huh. um, but what that kind of means to us is that actually the the user experience that's becoming like the central <laughs> place the whole business needs to care about because you know that's how your customers are actually engaging with your whole um, company and business and if that's not right then you're pretty screwed yeah so um, did you whole... hear that government <laughs> did you hear that they're listening oh they're always listening <laughs> that's right they've heard it right now live probably yeah. <laughs> so yeah so this I mean we kind of think that the um, focus is, on, is coming on design in a, in a good way that we are really, really like and um, that you know, tools to kind of help people solve those sort of problems where um, it's got to be possible on teams is kind of what it's all about, really. So I worked in a, a design company, for, uh, a web company, for, for a short amount of time in my life, and one of the conversations... So I don't come from design, so I'm not a designer like you guys are, but one of the conversations they had was, um, how does 
agile and a, or lean and smaller, not big A. That's the development world of things. Uh, and they had a particular view which was it doesn't fit with the agile, lean, iterative way of doing design. Doing designing. Yeah, it seems that it, you don't quite have that view. They, they were very much of the, the designer being the guru. In my mind, Apple. <laughs> and, you know, we will design this and then someone will make it. Um, whereas I come from that iterative, we'll try it, we'll chuck 10,000 things at the wall and see what sticks, which is the Google way of doing things, if you like. It seems that you, you're certainly coming at it, design, and you're breaking that down to say, well, no, we're here as a team and the tool should support a more collaborative viewpoint. Is that something that you've done all your life and, you're, and the tools have not allowed you to do it, so fuck it, let's make the tool? Or have you gone, developers don't, they work differently, fuck it, let's get the tools that I help as designers work with them. Yeah, I think it just came out of, quite naturally came out of the way that we were working and we went, well, what we wanted to work, I guess, and we're finding it hard to. So the places that we were working at, like um, Zero and BZ, I think, um, although, um, you know, they might kind of say that they're kind of design league, they're actually extremely collaborative, you know, in, in, in reality. And it's not necessarily designer lead, even if you were designer, it's not necessarily, but it's just kind of focusing on design, but that doesn't, that doesn't help to the exclusion of all the kind of, kind of stakeholders. And, you know, designed to be successful and accepted in the business, you've got to get everyone on board, bring them along on the whole journey. Uh, if you haven't talked to an engineer before you like show, <laughs> show the finish, um, create the finish piece is probably going to be really wrong and mm. not the thing that you should be building anyway. It's, going to, you know, it's not probably ill-informed. So you know, kind of maybe like without even being too sort of deliberate about it, kind of just felt very natural for us to kind of create tools that were kind of fit in with the way we were kind of working and wanted to work anyway. So, so how does that iteration part of it? Because you know they're very much uh, we'll have something working and then we plan learn something from Sprint 1. Agile with a big A. <laughs> and then we're going to go back and we'll keep iterating through and we'll learn and grow and change and we might break stuff. How does that fit with... Because it sounds like the tool certainly works in that way. But from a designer point of view, this is a question to you both really, how does that fit with you as designers? Uh, yeah, I, I don't think there's anyone who's solved this, right? There's not anyone who's really, like, solved design within an national environment that I know of, if you know. <laughs> 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 You're, You're on the way. Cool, You're definitely on the way, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I think it is. I, I, I think there is a natural tension there mm. where there's... Um, and, we, and we find this at Atomic. Like we, we're doing design every day. True. And... Um, and we're working in an agile kind of way, kind of sprints. And, and um, well, there's, there's a kind of natural tension there where a lot of stuff we are kind of like, oh, well, sometimes we really need to kind of front foot some design work before you know, mm. it really kind of gets into the agile kind of framework. But, um, and I, but that's still a lot of our design still happens within the agile framework as well, yeah. more of a iterative way. So kind of finding, it's actually a real kind of um, choosing the right time to use it and work yeah, within right. it kind yeah. of pick your battles and yeah. kind of go okay this is this bit of work it's going to work great this one no mm. and just do what's right for the individual piece of work um, that's why I kind of approach it but I, yeah it, it, it is hard because if you're you as a designer you're pulled in two directions at once you're kind of being asked to work on these high level kind of concepts what's coming up next what's the grand idea what's the yeah. what's the vision and at the same time someone's going yeah but how does that work you yeah know, what about this and you know like oh this doesn't seem to be really working out it's gonna to be too hard to build what are you going to do mm. and so through your just an average week you're really kind of pulled in quite extreme directions you're mm. right down the nitty gritty and then you're kind of they say you're kind of trying to be high level concepts mm. um Guy, so I think it's yeah, there's a t- tension there, but it's quite it's quite good as well. It's fun to well, it makes yeah, life interesting, be, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fun to be living in both worlds, right? Yeah. Kind of, yeah. If, if you're a, if you kind of have a maker spirit, I think you know you probably enjoy those that kind of range. Um, We've noticed that um you know I come from the old waterfall scenario for years, right? Designers do that, but now we're using your product. I tried it out um, for one, two clients now. It depends on the client, right? Some will just go, yep. I get it from a printout or a JP looked on screen. Whereas another client will go, well, how is this, how's it all going to work? So then you lay out all the pages and chuck it in Atomic and make it all whiz-bang, and it seems to just work. So anyway, I've used it for a couple of clients who 
who don't, can't use their imagination as much as, say, client B can. And so I put in the layout, clicked it around, sent a link, not a whole zip file of stuff. And they've clicked around and go, oh yeah, that's cool. Carry on and get the web guy to build it. It's really, really handy for us for that, from that angle. And I'm using it for website design. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that I haven't done the app yet. That's later on. I've got a guy who wants to do it. But um, at the moment, I'm using them for prototyping a website layout. Just a few pages. Yeah. One turned into 16, but that's, that's a different story. But um, yeah, but the thing is, they've been able to show the CEO or the other management how the site will actually work with the design we created. Cool. Is from the pitch level, so we pitched it, and then they said, well, how's it going to work? So, okay, well, how are we going to make it? And um, some of the guys said, well, why don't we just prototype it anyway? Because then we can use the same tools for other things. So I found your tool again, and I said, yeah, okay, we'll try this. And then the client got it straight away, so that made life a lot easier. So from a design point of view, that's how it works. Yeah, yeah. How it works, how you scroll, where does this particular, this is going to be a slider. Yeah. One thing I did do is I kind of hacked it on like a little bit, by um, because you don't quite put video in yet, so I made an animated gif in the background to show what video might look like (laughs) on this. And now it's really slow, but it, it kind of got the message across, you know. So I found new ways to use the comments. It's quite cool. Actually. I'm very happy with people yeah. find ways to hack it, <laughs> <laughs> hack it for, all, for all the things it doesn't do yet. <laughs> yeah, but it's on the list, right? I talked to the guys and they said, yeah, it's on the list. So, you know, do video stuff. Yeah, it's all great. Yeah. Well, it's all web, right? So why yeah. not? Yeah, so, um, so it's coming really handy yeah, for that, eh? For the clients that just don't quite get a still image, it's really handy. Mm. So is that the audience? We'll be there in a second. Is that the audience's is enabling the Rajas of the world to, to show the tool? Or is it the Rajas of the world to get to that point? Is it an internal tool? Or is it, uh, I can use this to show clients or customers? What do you have? Oh, I think that's a good, that's a good question. But I, I would say it's definitely both. Um, uh, um, but of course. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and more. So um, a lot of decision making, like uh, early on, kind of concept and decision making. I guess a lot of that happens at kind of at the start of the process, where you probably throw out a hundred ideas and you mm. can like get to the one that you're happy with taking to the next that's right. step of yeah. showing someone, and whether that's like someone in your team or eventually like client. Well, or I got else. the our account managers ended up presenting it live as a live site, you know, because we made it clickable and blah blah blah, and so they thought, okay, yeah, that's cool. When's it go live? But they didn't realise it's a prototyping tool, not an actual yeah, website. Right. So, 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 I mean, this would be very fa- useful for me. Oh, great. Like, fast, <laughs> fast prototyping of, of web layout and responsive design and stuff like that. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Mm. Well, Atomic. We, atomic. Yeah. atomic. <laughs> design and prototyping in a kind of collaborative yeah. environment. That's all we're talking about. Yeah. Martin, cool. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, Can you tell the listener that he's here? No. Oh. We'll have that voice as no one. So we've been, <laughs> we've been joined by... No one voice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we've, we've been joined by people. two others. And we'll go from left. So on my left, because you can hear this, of course, you've been listening to Grant. And on Grant's left... I'm Daryl. Daryl from something CEO, I do believe. That's right. The Daryl we've been hearing about. Oh. Yeah, those stories that oh, you were no. telling. This is that. Yeah. <laughs> Apologies for being late. <laughs> That's okay. And not from Atomic, we've also got, because we're going to have a chat with Alistair in a second, from a separate podcast, we've got Alistair from... Scoop. Excellent. And thank you very much for inviting me. That's all right. Fascinating. And Alistair's just made a connection, so we're, we're done. Our job well, is you done. did what you had <laughs> to do today <laughs> already. Yeah. You'll get your kickback, kickback once the sale is made. That's right. So it's just, we were just finding out from um, Grant how he got to this point of talking about this thing called Atomic. And I'm going to ask you, Daryl, how did you get to this point? So we had Otago, we had... Uh, was it zero, shift? B- our backgrounds, like shift, the, 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 the idea yeah. of Atomic, or like our backgrounds? Yours. Oh, scrambled. Are you a developer? <laughs> Uh, no, 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 well, not really. I, um, like, I've had my whole career as a designer, and Grant and I worked together, I'm not sure if you mentioned this, but from sort of 2000 onwards, um, at a place called Shift, which is now yep. excellent. I do, I know that place. That's um, the company I was talking yeah. about when right. I said I had a brief spill in. Oh, right. Hmm. Yeah, right. That's so we, we started on the same day there. Um, and so yeah, my career has been as a, as a designer working on web multimedia type stuff, um, and and especially like in the last sort of seven years or so, has been all about products and 
Hopefully, hopefully they're sort of drowned, like a, oh, like yeah. a buzzer. Um, does a good job. Oh, no, good, yeah. good. Um, and so, but my, my kind of education is as an engineer. So programming, electrical engineering, <laughs> came out of university, didn't want to do it, um, was kind of captivated by the web, accidentally fell into a design job, and then not, not so much, you know, later than that, we started working together and... Wow. Yeah. The rest is history. I and guess. then it was at the BNZ you remet. Well, we we worked we worked together at Shift for a mm. couple of years. We we did some like fun sort of slash ridiculous stuff in London together. Um, now there's the stories. And uh, yeah, the yeah, stories. Go on. professional stuff. <laughs> and uh, most whatever. Of <laughs> and um, I don't care if you pay for it, mate. Whatever. <laughs> and then we worked at Zero together. Uh, oh, okay. So yeah, we were both early zero guys. Yeah. Like, I think I was number five, and you were probably number six. Seven. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, and then and then we worked together again at, at BNZ for a few years, mm. and, and then straight into this. And you, you both left BNZ to form the company. Yeah, that's right. Yep. So what was that like? I look at you both when I say that. Working at what was BNZ? Taking the plunge, taking no, no. The plunge out of BNZ. Into we can all imagine what yeah. working BNZ was like. Taking the plunge was fun. Like we'd sort of we'd been talking about it for ages, uh, and I think it was about a, a year before we took the plunge. We'd sort of a, we'd had a lot of chats about it, and, and um, somewhat evaluated it. And we kind of explored some ideas, and we thought it was just a little bit early, and it probably wasn't. Like we were conscious that it was like, is this too early? Like, and you know, you're always thinking like, when it feels too early, it's probably right. Yes. Um, yeah. But then the subsequent year was really revealing. Like. We, you know, we had some people in our market who kind of showed that that you could not use Photoshop and still be okay, which is um, Sketch, which is sort of a you know, drawing tool in our market. Um, Adobe sort of inexplicably killed off their, their their main product, Fireworks, for this job at, at the same time as the market was kind of ramping up and everybody was doing like apps and and designing things for screen. They kind of killed their one product, which did which did that. And, uh, and, and we sort of thought, like, maybe there's not, um, maybe there's not a market in there. And um, you know, we, we were using fireworks, and uh, and and when they did the blog post announcement, there was something like a thousand responses on the day from people going, "You guys are fucking morons!" <laughs> and so the next day, they did this really unusual sort of emergency intervention on the blog, and were like, "Hey, update! I just want to reassure you, we do actually know what we're talking about. You can all use Photoshop." And then it's like another. <laughs> we were going, the table flip. Um, and so this really it sort of validated it. And, um, and sort of at the same time, we had started talking to Vim, who was, who was the other co-founder, oh, yeah. so CTO. Um, and he was kind of ready to go, and that was the obvious person we were missing. So the tech felt really good. Like a, only a year ago, people were like, I still don't think you can do this in the browser. The performance is not going to be there. And, yeah. Um, but but it, the indications were there that it's going to be mm-hmm. that it was going to be ready. So yeah, it was like it's good. <laughs> Monday, we're doing it Monday. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 the plunge was kind of easy. Yeah, kinda it builds easy. up to it. It's just like, oh, we've forgotten to tell everybody else because we just already oh, started. Yeah. Yeah. By well, the you, way, you yeah. sort of get that sense of. Uh, an opportunity that doesn't come about very often, like when you've got the right people in the right place, and um, you've kind of got financial support for the idea, and, and you've got a really strong, in our case, a really strong professional gut feeling that, that well, like the, 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 prior, the year prior we'd spent developing a product called U Money for BNZ, uh, which is an ah, banking right. product. Oh, that was my question. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and so there was sort of the two of us working on that and we were constantly in this environment that we were finding ourselves in all the time where it wasn't designers in a box like putting lipstick on stuff anymore it was designers working in a team with other people like it was a really collaborative effort we didn't have any kind of collaborative tools to really capitalise on it and we were wanting to prototype stuff all the time it was like every day we needed to prototype something whether that was just to share with each other or um, circulate an idea with the team or, or whatever 
it was just impossible, you know, like, w like we can both code, so we could we could code it, but that's sort of a day or two's work, and we yeah. just felt like, actually all we want to do is test, like, we're going to click this, if this comes up, does that feel okay? Yeah. You know, and one day's work, it's like, that doesn't feel okay. <laughs> Next? Yeah. yeah, and so that, that was the genesis for Atomic, really, like, I mean, that, that same thing takes an Atomic right now, you know, less than five minutes. Yeah. Um, so you were scratching your own itch. Yeah, absolutely. Very much so. And sh and and bizarrely enough, Adobe proved that that itch was common. Bizarre thing for them to do. But they did it now, and thank God they did. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. on them. Yeah. Well, I think Fireworks was sitting on top of a. Um, a tech stack that was really old, you know, that was, uh, they hadn't updated it since Aqua kind of days, and it was shaky, shaky as hell, and it was buggy as hell, like it crashed all the time. So I think they weren't that motivated to do it, and, and probably they'll start, I mean, they'll probably either acquire someone who does this, or um, maybe do a study works. <laughs> yeah, probably. Not. We want to acquire them. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, but that's, they've sort of shifted their focus towards marketing. Like they've, they've been pretty clear about this in their investor relations as well. Yeah. Um, they think that that creative tools, which is, we don't sort of see ourselves in the creative tools market. Like we see ourselves as software tools. Like mm. we, we make tools for software teams. <laughs> Um, but Adobe's put the, the creative tools market aside because it's only a fifteen billion dollar market. Nearly. But the, the marketing market is a twenty five billion dollar market, mm. so that's the one that they're after. So we're happy to go after the smaller fish. <laughs> okay. Then. Yeah. So I mean, I'm just I'm interested in the origins of you money and, and the influence of it on on. So Atomic didn't exist prior to you leaving BNZ at all. No. no. So Atomic you, came out of the desire during that work. Because oh, I, because when, I'm, when I went to the U Money launch in Auckland, which was all great, great, a lot, lot of fun, and and I was completely blown away because I thought, holy shit! So they, and basically the presentation said. So we asked our customers what they wanted in terms of user design, and they said, we want our banking experience to be like Facebook. So that's what we built, which, which I thought was, yeah, okay, that sounds like a really sensible web strategy. And then consequently, as a result, we built it for children, but everybody liked it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's... And everybody that was on it seemed really happy. I mean, they they seemed like they'd really enjoyed the agile process, and the bank was enormously proud of having to build, having managed to build an API that allowed you to interact with it. And yeah. at the delight of the chat when somebody managed to open and create an account using just sort of typing something. That's an actual account. Yeah, wow. I mean, it was mostly a gutsy move from the bank. You yeah, know, it was. Um, it sort of felt like a lot of the time I think we were thinking, oh my god, I can't believe we're getting away with this. You know, like, <laughs> we're actually going to deliver a good banking experience. And I, I think, you know, I hope it is. I think it's sort of fun and it's easy to use. Um, and, you know, people were saying stuff like that when we were showing them demos of the product. You know, they, they, were, they were Facebook users, they used it all the time, they kind of understood the, the paradigms. Mm. And so we, we spent a lot of time leveraging those paradigms, I think. The team was quite small and was fully agile and in little clusters. And yeah, that's right. That's right. But how much has that spread since, do you think? I mean, is it, is it having much of an influence, the success of that project? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very much so. I mean, the, the, the team down at BNZ has probably doubled. Um, and new money is taking on more and more of the traditional banking stuff. Like when, I guess sort of it was um, you know, minimum viable product type stuff when we were working on it. So it did things like it did 95% of the stuff, you know, transfer money, pay someone, add a bill payee, and you know, it slowly started doing things like add a savings account. And I guess slowly things like mortgages will go in there and there more and more. Um, so you need a bigger team to support that. Oh, just another question. Back a long, long time ago, this called Hot Dog. He can't stop himself. Which is a, which is a journalist. <laughs> <because> hot Dog. <laughs> no, Hot Dog. So it was like a coding, sort of, it was a colour coding, code writing tool or something. I don't know, it was a, it was a start-up in Melbourne. 
back right, in right. 1999 or something. I mean, I'm wondering if that is sort of like analogous now, because I mean, we've sort of got to the point where design is becoming an increasing component, in fact, the dominant component from a sort of like a creative value perspective of a lot of these systems. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, UX design is, the, yeah. is, is everything. Yeah, almost. yeah, well, I mean, and, and differentiating design from designers as well is important. I mean, we, we were employed as designers at BNZ, but, you know, the, the, the kind of the currency we wanted to trade was design. You know, that was what we circulated with the, the engineering team and with the, with the stakeholders. That was sort of the, the valuable asset that you were sharing. And what we were finding was that we couldn't, we couldn't prototype, but we couldn't bring our designs to life. We couldn't prototype yeah. them easily. And we couldn't share them easily, and so it was, it was just, like, you know, everything then slowed down, your iteration cycle slowed down. So, yeah, maybe it's, maybe it's analogous, it's sort of... It's so where, how long ago was this that you held hands and jumped ship? Ships Beginning of last year, yeah. so oh, ja- okay. January we started. Like the first working day last year. Last yeah. year. It's a good way to start the year. Yeah, nice. It's in March. The <laughs> quit, quit my job uh, over a few whiskeys. Um, way to do it. Yeah, yeah, it's a good way to do it. I remembered a few days later. That's right. Good job. Oh yeah, quit. Do something. Else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and then straight into startup. Straight into startup land, yeah. Which, whilst you've been through zero and, uh, and certainly at the beginning of zero, right. startup even that really is when you've got that amount of cash. Ah. You, but it, it, it's startup ish, yes, yeah. but you're truly in startup. Well, so when we joined zero, zero had not very much cash. You know, less than a couple of million dollars. Um, yeah, so there you go. That's my eyebrows went up then. <laughs> less than a couple of million. <laughs> well, you know, and they're hiring like crazy. Yeah. So exactly. um, you know, that was, yeah, it was definitely. Yeah, it felt very startupy, didn't it? I mean, we were working <laughs> in an apartment above New World Metro. Yeah. It was like. <laughs> Ten of us with an air conditioner working overtime. <laughs> stinky. Um, apartment 404. It like a apartment 404, which was the joke oh, every day. No. <laughs> the unfindable apartment. E- exactly. A- apartment not found. <laughs> was the joke. Yeah. Um, and here you are now. You're in your own startup. You still in beta at the moment. That, that's correct, isn't it? That's, that's right. right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but probably but not. Knows. Yeah. Probably not too much longer. Uh, in this couple of months, we'll be out of beta. Yep. And uh, yeah, the real world. Yeah. Of course. So are you still accepting um, beta testers? Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. It's open. Open for anyone to try. You can join the people that are on there now and go for it. Yeah. It's really handy. Yeah. I think I might, have, I might have checked it out some time ago um, when I came across it somehow. Right. Um, but I imagine, it, but I, imagine it's, I imagine it's evolved since then. You're going to be hit with all kinds of automated <laughs> messaging <laughs> from now <laughs> <our> on. <laughs> automated. <laughs> yes. Come on. That's Not what sure. these devices are for. They're recording the conversation. <laughs> yeah. Turning it into nice signals for Google. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Exactly. Yeah. Anonymized. Yeah. Anonymized. <laughs> So where to next? Uh, and, and not just for the product, but even not for the company. For you guys, where, where do you see? Well, I mean, it's, uh, I guess something that I'm, I'm sort of conscious of is that it, I guess it, it looks from the outside like we've launched a product into market and now we're just going to sell it. But um, from I guess from our point of view, like we feel like. <laughs> It's a little bit like an iceberg, you know, like maybe not even less like an iceberg, like 1% of our product is kind of above the water and people are like, look at that. And and now we just need to bring the other 99% of it up and show them. Um, and we spent like a year and a half building foundational stuff that we're now just starting to show. So that's exciting. Like a product in a year's time is going to be different yeah. um, and a lot bigger and a lot better. So... So we're starting to sell, but really, like we're, you know, kind of looking more twenty-four months out and what, what the product looks like then, which is more interesting. But our roles have changed as well, right? Like we're, what we're doing on a daily basis is changing quite a bit. As far yeah. as like, you know, starting off being 
totally the ones designing, yeah. the ones coding, and then as a team has kind of grown, we're up to about 11 people now. Like, we're people to help with all that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're the idiots now. No, no, we're the idiots, yeah. Like, and um, just uh, shuffling cards around on a chip trailer all day. And, own documents, but um, <laughs> but um, you know that. Kind of, but you know, extrapolate that out a year, that'll be really kind of fascinating if we keep growing. Um, the speed that we have, then you know, it'll be really fun to be bringing on lots of new people, new kind of personalities and talents and stuff like that. So I think that, that that's the other side of it, right? Like just having the joy, of kind of building a team. So um, it's pretty fun. Yeah, we've sort of been. Um, a, a little bit flat on our on our team this year. Just you know, we're sort of in the end of the funding cycle, so we're just about to raise some more money, um, and then then we'll be kind of growing the team, you know, sort of reasonably aggressively again. Yeah. So more people, we can do more stuff, build more products. So it's kind of an exciting next six months will be quite exciting. So. The funding cycle, that good. Is that something you're going through at the moment? Is yeah. What's that feel like? It's like a roller coaster <laughs> between like good and awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. It's, it's yeah, it's interesting. Really good. Like we've done a couple of rounds already. Um, are they New Zealand based or you? Yeah, around so far has been New Zealand. Okay. Have been yeah. New Zealand based. This one um, won't, won't be. Um, it's you know mostly kind of due to the, the the sum. So I think once you start trying to raise you know m- multiple millions of dollars, you know, it gets harder in, within New Zealand. Um, and and also you kind of want investors who can support you through following rounds. And yeah, that makes it even harder and sort of helps strategically somehow, whether it's market entry or some sort of domain um, yeah. industry connection they can provide. Is that America-based people? Um, no, not, not necessarily. <laughs> Certainly been a, a, a bit of interest from American venture capital, yep. um, but you know, Europe as well, and and within Australasia. Mm. Um, so yeah, it just it just depends. Like. I think we're sort of at an interesting stage where we don't necessarily need US VC money, but that could be that could be an attractive option. Um, but on the other hand, there's everyone's got their strengths that they, that they offer you. So. And is that your particular goal for now? That's the thing you do on a it's probably, <coughs> That's probably what takes up most of my time. It's why I'm half an hour late. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Unexpected um, investor calls. 14, 10 million, that's fine. We'll yeah, 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 yeah. So the next the next phase is the big, is potentially a VC phase for you. So at that point, do you feel as though you're sort of on the verge of losing control? Because a lot of, a lot of founders feel that way. No, I don't think so. I, I think if you go into it accidentally, that's that's the way. Yeah, um, we've been we've been really strict about who we invite into our shareholder base, and we will continue to be so. Um, so we don't we could raise this round internally. We've got enough support internally to to kind of keep going as much as we need to. But sort of looking to bring more strategic input, yeah. widen our base, like set ourselves up in the best possible manner for yeah. next round. And I think probably next round is where it starts to get a little bit crunchier, um, but the further you go into it, the more control you've got in terms of yeah. the figures that you own, like the predictability of your revenue, and so the less kind of volatility that is in the shareholder. Opinion spectrum. Do you, have, do you have a plan around price? I mean, or is you are you already because the beat is free, I presume. But what's the? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we've we've got about twenty customers now um, who have just been just testing pricing with really. We just kind of selected a bunch of people, um, offered some pricing, you know, offered, offered them the, um, the ability to pay while everyone else was in beta. Paying early while everyone else is free. That must be a hard pitch. I mean, that's, the point is, it's about usefulness. I mean, if they're, if they're willing to pay when they don't have to, that shows that they really think they're useful. Yeah. You're going to get really good feedback. So. Absolutely. I mean, a big thing for us is um, sort of look, looking at our market with, with segments in mind. So if we were trying to sell, um, like we, we know our product will be sold kind of in the 
um, you know, the single seat under fifty dollars per user type, per yeah. type yeah. range. So it's kind of a typical SaaS um, you know, software as a service business model. Um, and if we were trying to sell that to the same, exact same product at the exact same price to like a freelancer, say, we know that it's a much harder sell. Um, but selling into product teams. You're, you're making more of a value-based judgment. They're, they're saying, you know, does this help me do my job even a little bit better? And we know the answer to that is yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, whereas a freelancer is typically like, well, I mean, it's coming out of their pocket, right? Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, a, I mean, it's, a, different, it's a different sale. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's our monetization model as well. It's good because essentially you, if someone wants to pay a premium, you actually have to, they, they need a very, very clear saving, really, yeah. saving in time. But I mean, that becomes quite easy to judge because if people are using you and, they, and they're finding that they're getting better all the time. So, so, we're, so, so one of our biggest customers um, has, has a really large team and um, you know, the, the value for them is in being able to collaborate so easily with each other and communicate, like use design to communicate. And, and that's... That alone, like even to a non-designer, is worth lots of money. You know, it saves them lots of money. Um, and so, so selling uh, selling a license to someone like that is fundamentally different than someone who works by themselves because they're they're not collaborating with anyone. Often. Yeah. So, so it's more of a it's more of a team sale for us, <coughs> long term. But it takes a little while to yeah to get the product in place mm. to do that. Very cool. Mm. Two more questions. And the first one is, France already had this question, so we're going to go back to you. Oh, shit. We should, have, we should have conferred. Oh, well, no. No one knows the answer. No, just, could you answer this question? This is like a bad reality no, show. No, like, what? no, no, this is the... So what makes you happy? What makes me happy? What makes you happy? Oh, God. You mean, like, professionally happy? Uh, this is That's making the end me... Of the question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a rhetorical question. No. Um, <laughs> Well, this this is certainly making me happy. Like I've loved doing this. Um, I I kind of wouldn't want to give it up. Um, well, no, there's nothing else I'd rather be doing right now. Like it's like I, you know, as we said earlier, like making the, taking the jump was easy. Yeah. Um, and and part of the reason for that was because we were making a product for people who we knew really well. Uh, and we identified with so much, it just kind of gives you so much more strength to go through it. Um, so I think we've got a great product and people love it, and so it's it's kind of all worked out perfectly. But even if it even if it dips down or times get rough, like we still know we're making a product for people who are like us, and you can't really get too much better than that. That's fantastic. So we're feature at the moment. Yeah. Um, Atomic.io. It's, it is still open. Yep, yep. anyone yep. can sign up now, yep. get in straight so away. As we recall, this is like to go out in about four weeks' time. What are we now? End of July, August, so. Something December ish to go live, something like that? Well, we'll probably release pricing sometime in the next couple of months. Okay. Um, I mean, we, we, we are live and anybody can use it now openly. Yep. Um, so there's, you know, it's kind of soft launch stuff for us. So. Okay. There'll be pricing, and then you know, yeah. we may end up doing some event around it. But pricing is the next significant thing for us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, awesome. And are you on the Twitter? How do people get in touch with you two specifically? Yeah, and then obviously Atomic, if they would like to say, I don't want to talk with those people. Yeah, so they can. How e- would they? You can email us. Like I'm, I'm, I'm Daryl at Atomic.io, which is D A R R Y L. <laughs> Neil Grant. Yeah, like that. That's easy. Grant at the top. Or and or uh, at Grant Robinson on the Twitter. Yeah, uh, that's fine as well. And yeah, I'm, I'm at Daryl Gray. Um, Gray with an A. Uh, and and Atomic is we uh, as in W E underscore R A R E underscore Atomic. We are Atomic. Oh, uh, yeah, with underscores. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like it's like we. Yeah, it's a hard one to spell out. Um, and so, yeah, absolutely hit us up on Twitter. Like, we love hearing from people, and people share their stuff with us on Twitter and via email, which is awesome. We love seeing it. So if anyone signs up and has a go, hit us up. 
Brilliant. Oh, thank you yeah. so much, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Times ahead. Yeah, yeah. We look forward to the follow-up in, in a year's time. Yeah, absolutely. Six months. Yeah. Where's your office? Uh, just up on Dixon Street, actually. Yeah, yeah. very close. Cool. cool. Well, thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Cheers. Thanks, yeah. Thanks very much. That was so cool. But I, have to, I have to be honest. I went into that interview thinking it's going to be a bit designery for me. It got a but little bit geekery on it. It did, but I learned so much. Yeah. And once I heard the approach from both co-founders about their business and how they want to run things, it was so cool. And I was so impressed that I went off to find out more. It's very cool. It's a, it's a hidden gem. I don't know if that's mm. true. Is that just me because I don't work in that area? Is it? Well, it took me a while to find it too. I um, shopped around, as you normally do for web products, and um, I you know, did the double click, new tab, new tab, new tab, and I found Atomic as one of the five I'd test out, try out. Mm. And that just worked better than the rest. And you didn't have to log in for stuff. and it, Yeah, it just had more function mm. than we wanted. Yeah. And it's got... And a lot of fact, it was New Zealand based too, which I found out later after using it. Yeah. You know, based here, yeah. Oh, very cool. It's mm. got some big names as, as clients. Mm. Now, they're still beta, is that true? Yes. Coming up in a few months' time, I think they're going to launch properly. Awesome. Was bang and everything. Yeah. Mm. Duh, but look, here's a massively successful future for them. Mm. Solving uh, real-life problems, as they said. We just want to have a tool that works for us. Sure. So that's very yeah. cool. Next week. Next week, we have a slightly different slant on it all. But it's no less impressive. We've got Kate Henderson, who is a Vic Uni student, and we talk about how she came to be in computers and what she does to engage with the IT industry. And it's something quite special to hear. And be prepared for your mouth to drop open, <laughs> as I know at one point ours did. What? Yeah. <laughs> right, let's wrap it up. Find us on the social networks. Oh, maybe two of them now. <laughs> yep. So RIP Google Plus, so bad luck. Uh, find us on Twitter at AccessGrantedNZ or on the Bookface, as my Microsoft friend calls it. Facebook. Yep. The best way to chat with us is use Twitter, actually, and um, Mike is at Miramamai, and I'm at NZ Raj. And also rate us on iTunes, which helps us get our, spread our word, really. Mm. Um, you can give us a five star. We'd appreciate a five, but, you know, give us what you want. And put a little comment in there. Just let us know your thoughts on the show, what else we can do with it. So we really appreciate mm. all those that do rate our show it really does make a difference so thank you so much mm. and thanks for your time and see you next Tuesday the Kiwi Tech people sharing their own stories ka ki ta hashtag me dot co dot nz